Hey guys, what's up? Rodrigo Lima here. Another frequently asked question, or maybe uh, it's not asked enough, is uh, what is a good way to use 3D scanning? There's a lot of different technology out here, and today we're here with Steven. He's going to help us talk a little bit about uh, the different uses of 3D scanning, and specifically we're going to talk about the Artec 3D Evo. The Evo or Eva? Evo? It's, a, it's a good question, yeah. So it's made by a company called Artec, and the model, this model is the Eva. So here discussing these new capabilities that Lime Design has now with different scanners. The one that we, we picked off the shelf here today is the Artec EVA. Um, this one actually comes in two variants. So we have one called the EVA, one called the EVA Lite. EVA Lite is your, your entry level price point to get you into the 3D scanning. Still has great, great geometry capture, a lot of great um, precision and accuracy. We're talking at a tenth of a millimeter there. So really, really great accuracy and resolution. Um, but this one for today, we're looking at the Eva Light. Cool. What type of uh, technology is that considered? So yeah, good question. There's actually a lot of different technologies out there on the market. The one that the Artec scanners use is actually called Structured Light. So we're gonna show you a clip of this thing in action. And what you're gonna notice is all the lights flashing. Uh, once we hit go on it, it's got this array of these LEDs flashing this white light. Mm -hmm. That's that structured light. There's a camera lens inside there that's that's calibrated to actually capture that. And that's how it builds the picture. What's great about that is a lot of people say, hey, that looks like a, like an iron. Like I'm going to iron some clothes. And you know what? Yeah, that's exactly how it works. You're kind of like an iron or a spray painter. You're just kind of waving it around. No targets, no pre-processing. Just point, shoot, capture the model. In the, uh, in the software, which leads me to a question you're probably gonna ask next, does it require software? Yes, it does. This particular model has to run with a software on board installed on a Windows machine here um, to capture the geometry. Is it a specific software? Yeah, so it's proprietary by Artec called Artec Studio. Okay. Um, right now they're on Artec Studio 17 and that's the, the proprietary software and then uh, that's what actually runs the scan. So we got it hooked up right here. Um, you'll see it actually capture the model and then you can do some post-processing in there. And then out of Artec Studio, you can go to more advanced processing with Geomagic. Mm -hmm. You can use SolidWorks. SolidWorks has got some wonderful capabilities added in 2019, 20, 21, 22. Nice. So working with 3D scans. And then um, there you go. That's the CAD package. That's what you probably want to do. You want to start 3D printing stuff. Probably going to want to take it into a, to a CAD package. Maybe you're using it to capture a real model and then you want to reverse engineer some stuff around it, Yeah, yeah. then you can go into your, your favorite cat package. What's your favorite? Um, I use SOLIDWORKS. Um, SOLIDWORKS. It's what I have the most experience in, is what I taught, was taught in school, uh, but uh, I know that there's also other softwares out there. Fusion 360 was very powerful as well, but a much cheaper package you know, for the, for the price. Never heard of it. Um, yeah, right. SOLIDWORKS, <laughs> ride or die. <laughs> So I also have a couple other products here because 3D scanning is not gonna work for, not every technology works well for every type of product. Just like there's not a perfect 3D printer that works for every single type of prototype you're trying to make, there's not a perfect 3D scanner at the time that I know of that does everything you wanna do, right? Some things are made for bigger things and you wanna do a boat, you gotta use a different 3D scanner and you're doing something that's really small. Um, and something that's clear is not gonna also always be um, well, scanned in 3D and there's also workarounds that we have for that we could talk about that later but right now we're going to show oh, well, I, I'm actually right now I want to ask Steven out of all these products that you see right here that we've put out here right what are the products that you think would scan well yeah let me add one more real quick let me grab this guy sure wow we think about this gang got Halloween coming up <laughs> I don't know when you're watching this but right now it's September last day of the working month um let me let me do this here. I got about this. I got some categories here. You know so, what? Yeah, we can move it to the left or right. Uh, whatever's more easy and more difficult to 3D scan, maybe. That'd be cool. We talk about how great this technology is with it being structured light, in that it just flashes the light on it, no pre-processing. That strength sometimes is a weakness. So here are the weaknesses. It has to actually make contact for all intents and purposes, eye contact with the surfaces, you can't scan up in here, right? So it's gonna miss some of those surfaces. Same reason it's not so good with this, because if you look here, you got all these, um, I mean, the combs of the actual comb, right? Uh, 
it's not gonna be able to get in there. It's not that these are too small. It's actually gonna be able to handle the resolution and there's no problem, but it's getting in around it, right? You gotta capture all of the surfaces or else you know, it's not gonna be able to actually paint that picture. And then this, because it's structured light, great technology, not really good with transparent and shiny objects. So that's one of the problems there. So I kind of categorized here. Rodrigo's still searching, picking yeah, random, yeah, random yeah. stuff off the shelves. I wanna throw some, uh, <laughs> I love some it. tricky ones in the... I think it'd be able to handle all these, right? All these, no problem. Um, what, what do they have in common? Well, we How about these? Let me show something else at you. <laughs> all right, so <laughs> this, my goodness. I don't know. I'm gonna have to get my calipers out there and measure that. But I think this is looking pretty Cause, small. Because not all scan, uh, not all scanners can scan hair. I know that's one yeah. of the one one thing that is difficult to 3D scan. So that's why I want to, you know, talk about them and then show kind of a rough result of what you can get and um, you know what to expect. Yep. And it's all about finding the right technology for your type of product or whatever you're doing the most of in the biz. And then in four years, we've got the World Cup coming here to Miami. Dolphin it's Stadium, insane, right? Hard Rock Stadium, hosting. Do you know how many Latin people we have here in South Florida? It's gonna I, be lost, I lost track in the millions. <laughs> All right, so we got it plugged up here. We're ready to go. Remember, point and shoot. Here we go. You listen to that. Uh, and you can see, you got to keep eye contact. You're kind of watching these bars, making sure that they're kind of centered in that area that's giving you like a big visual gauge. Once we're ready to go, you just start scanning it, maintaining that distance, watching those green bars, making sure that they don't drift. I'm a little too close, I need to get farther away. Here we go, around it like that, making sure those bars are right in the center there. I'm too close. A See, can, away. This, can this technology be used with, uh, let's say, a turntable? Absolutely, yeah, really? turntables are. And see, I'm turning around it, right? I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep walking all the way around this. But if Rodrigo goes and grabs a turntable, it might be good. So I keep controlling this distance here, forwards, backwards. Oh, he's talking about a turntable? We all right there. Giving the camera inside of here time to actually capture all those frames. And once I get it all painted, then it's going to be good to go. Right now, it's capturing about a thousand frames. I'm gonna be a little tight here on the cables. Cable management, not so good here. But remember I said, you can see up on the screen, mm -hmm. underneath the, the ball, the globe, I'm actually missing some of those surfaces, so I gotta get up under there, right? Remember, we have to make eye contact with all the surfaces. So that's what we're working towards here. Oh, there we go. Lost tracking for a bit. There we go. So I think that's good. Just like that, I'm gonna pause this, stop it, and we'll capture that scan. All right. So it's just a rough scan here real quick. And from here, what we need to do is use some of these tools. We got editors, other tools. We can fix this geometry all up. We're good to go. So what we're looking at here, guys, is uh, we had previously 3D printed this trophy here, and we are showing the Arctec 3D scanner. The EVA is showing how the structured light is. So if you see that pattern, that's the computer just knows how you know how to interpolate that into 3D data, 3D spatial data, um, known as a point cloud, which it's basically getting like millions of little points, and the softwares that we use then clean up that data, and then help us be able to turn into something we can take into. Sometimes you can take it into another software. Uh, sometimes if you just 3D print it and make a replica, if that's what it is, depends on what your use of 3D scanning or what you what you need that data, that yeah. file for. Uh, and then there's gonna be some cleanup too, because check this out, coming around here, we got Rodrigo's arm when he walked around. <laughs> he walked a little too close. And then you see the scanner is being picked up as well a little bit. So yeah, we need to be able to separate those uh, in CAD, later. well, in, in the mesh software, the mesh so why editing you, software. Why would we want this instead of just grabbing it and taking a ruler and calipers, man? Because not every, I mean, can you imagine trying to create that, like, one-to-one? -one no, no chance. 
you know, by hand. I'm not doing that. You know, some things like, let's say, uh, you know, like this product here, you know, this is a Revolve, very easy product. Yep. I wouldn't pay to 3D scan this. You know, for this it'd be easier just to, you know, I mean, it depends on the budget because whenever you have a 3D scan file, you already have a leg up on, on the work you have to do because you, now you're focused on just converting that data into CAD that you can use for whatever 3D system you're using, whatever CAD system you're using. Um, so, but some things that are more organic, definitely harder to, to capture by hand and calipers. It's just, you know, this would probably be a good example here. Um, Let's see. Pretty I don't know how well it's going to pick up those bolts, though. We'd have to, we'd have to probably prepare the bolts, right? What, inside there? I mean, remember, it's, it's got to make icons. But I'm saying, saying these, is, is it going to reflect and not capture no, that? No, that's not too reflective. No, yeah. they mean like shiny metal. Yeah, yeah. Shiny, shiny. That's like satin? That's fine. Mm. That would be fine. Remember, preview. We're going to get it set up. Ready to go. Kind of orient yourself here a little bit. Too close. So guys, now what we're looking at is how well this machine picks up uh, basically an opaque material, white, and then it has some metal fixturing. I think it's like titanium screws and bracketry uh, for a fused yep. and no turntable this time. Correct. So I gotta move around. <laughs> I mean, but I don't know if y'all are capturing this live here. I don't know how this is going to get edited down. Do you want me to capture it a little not. bit? Rodrigo is quite literally just grabbing stuff off the shelf and putting it in front of it. Right. No prep, no nothing. Off the shelf, it's ready to go. Mm. Capture the model. So no decals, no nothing, targets. Yeah. We're just scanning point and shoot. Go ahead, Richie, go pick something else out of the show. Nah, <laughs> I didn't know we were really busy. Ooh, how about this? A small electronics, will it capture this? So we might be towards the uh, the Here's bottom end of the resolution on that. Let's try these. Want to replace this? You put it next to it. Oh, shit, yeah, I moved it. That's fine. Yeah, that's right. Right. next to it. That'll be fine. Let's take a look. That'll be interesting to see what it picks up. Because like we said, every software is a little bit different and probably won't really tell until we look, take a look at it later. So, I mean, it's getting it. Maybe, maybe if it was standing up, it would be better for it, you know, for the board. Yeah, remember, it's got to it's gotta make eye contact with it, right? That was a bad example. That's all right. Gotcha. Keep pulling off the shelf, man. Whatever you want. We got it. All right. All right. Oh, well, we try, here we go. We have a soda, soda can. This Maybe. was a product that uh, we helped a client uh, basically wrap some cans for some Put it video down photography that they had to do some ad campaigns. Not for, okay, that's not, that's not right here? Yeah. So now what I'm doing is kind of just adding to the geometrical space. I'm just going to we'll keep adding it to the table in an area where it hasn't scanned yet. Is this technology good for using, like, if you wanted to scan a whole room? No. This handheld one? No, there's others. Okay, okay. Uh, tripod mounted, like a LiDAR scanner. So guys, that was fun. Uh, as you hear, the machine's still running. It has a cool off period after you're done using it. And um, so I think it was a good example. It uh, shows you, you know, a good amount of things that we think would work well for this. So, you know, I think if we had to re-separate this as to what would work well and what wouldn't, you know, this would kind of be a... Uh, you know, from left to right, this is what would work well and what, what kind of is too small or might not work as well, right? Yeah. Just based from our... Some small features, but it's really the eye contact aspect of it. Camera has to see everything, right? Yeah. Remember why this one wouldn't work? Just like with 3D printers, there's some, some geometry that certain technologies can't print, right? If it's yeah. got internal features, but it's completely closed off, you can't print that because it's support material, right? You have to get the support material out of there. Just like this, you've got to get the light in there. And it has to actually see everything. Yep. And um, yeah, like we were saying, also like this, something like this could be 3D scanned, but there's some preparation work. Normally, would spray it with a, a a type of dust that you can later remove, or you can just spray it with a, like a gray satin or a white satin uh, paint, yep. so that you can be able to scan it in in one to one. And uh, yeah, man, so I think that was a, a great example of what the Artec 3D EBA does. Yeah. Structured light 
technology. Structured light, yep. Structured light comes in all sorts of different shapes and sizes. This is, is the newest addition here to the lab, lab design tools. Awesome. Well, thank you guys. Look forward to catching you on the next one.